So we'll call the um, <clears throat> fire and EMO committee meeting for October the 12th, is it today? 12th, right? 13th, 2022. Um, we'll start with the acknowledgement of treaties of peace and friendship. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Willistawake, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1726. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Willistawake title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. Thank you. Next is the uh, well. I'll, uh, next is the uh, reaffirmation of the oath of office. We do her hereby accept the office of counsel and will diligently, faithfully, and impartially discharge to the best of our ability the duties of the office as may be imposed upon us by law. Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, next is the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we'll just uh, add that. And if there are no other additions or deletions, uh, can I get a mover for the motion? To adopt. I move that the agenda be adopted with an amendment. Yeah. Okay, can I get a seconder? I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. So the Amended agenda has been adopted. Next is the conflict of interest. If uh, anyone on council or uh, with us has a conflict of interest, just acknowledge it with the clerk. Thank you. Um, the adoption of the minutes. So uh, this goes back to the July 14th meeting um, that we had. Um, so can we get uh, those uh, motion to adopt those minutes? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if we can just, uh, we'll just note that. And with that uh, amendment noted, uh, can we get a mover, please? Uh, I move that the minutes of the fire EMO meeting held on July 14, 2022, 20, be adopted. With changes, because it's just yeah amendments yeah amendment, yeah. yeah okay so with the uh, amended uh, minutes uh, can I get a seconder yeah I will second okay on the uh, question all those in favor say aye all those opposed say nay motion passed we uh, reports policies old business. Uh, does anyone have anything there they wish to add? Okay. Yeah. Keith, was there something that you wanted to? Nineteenth of November. Um, that's going to be an appreciation dinner. That's at the rec center. I take it, Keith. Okay. All right. So then we move on to new business. Yep. Uh, Deputy Mayor Berg.
Okay, that's good. Might have a backup spot just in case. Okay, is that it, uh, Chief Legacy? Okay. Yeah? You say you're having an appreciation dinner. Like, what does that involve? What, uh, what are we looking at there? And, and do you cater to that, or do you? We do, and also we were, we're thinking of getting uh, a little distillery to do it. Okay. Is, is, that, is that an invitation? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking. Um, the, my wife is the president of the Ladies Auxiliary, okay? Um, you know, the, the more time they have, the better it is, you know? So, I mean, if that is the intention, I would highly suggest, you, you know, whoever you deal with that touch base, I'm, or I can have Gail touch base with you tomorrow or next week or whatever, or, you know. But uh, November 19th is, what, four weeks away? Five weeks away? So, um, and and they are extremely busy at, remember, um, at Remembrance Day, but there's enough time in between to, to make it, you know, viable, so. The what? Well, I can, I, I can assure you uh, from experience and know-how, um, they, they do a, a great job and serve a tremendous meal, so. So at the end of the day, uh, I have no hesitation. The choice is correct, but uh, but with that said, I don't want to speak for them. I just want to say, um, you know, touch base with Gail, and 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 you know that way there, everybody's on the same page. All right. Um, so now we'll move on to new business uh, discussion regarding fundraising. Um, Councillor Guitar McDonnell. I know we had discussed this at the last meeting, okay, and, and when we talked about doing a major fundraiser like you have in the past. I'm just curious I, uh, why you're, there's no interest or what, what the issue is because other villages have 50-50s, they have Chase Ace. These are major fundraisers and I know that I know that we have equipment that's coming due to be replaced and it's not cheap, we know that. But if there's any way that we could work together to try to form some type of fundraising event, I I think we should, to be completely honest with you. Well, I can probably say that we prefer part of that to the next process. Uh, the only chance given up. Um, as far as fundraising, we've been discussing it ourselves on different methods. Uh, what we can get for major equipment, I guess it can be eight apparatus studies. Could I ask a question though? I know that, okay, you had uh, the beer gardens and that in the summer and that, and that was basically, I'm gonna say free money, really, because we pay for the band and all that. Where does that money go?
I'm, I'm assuming there's records and all this where the money's going in and out. I'm, I'm assuming there's the, there's books on that with the, where the money goes and where the money comes out. And the other thing is too the Chase Ace. I know that the ATV Trail made a million dollars, if not more, with their Chase Ace. Would it be? I know they were lucky this time. I know the last time when it was came out, Jacques Willette told me he was disappointed it came out when he did because they had, almost had enough money for the trail for a bridge. But this time here, they had more than enough to cover that bridge and with everything else that they did for it. So a Chase Ace would be amazing to do here if we, you know, if we can get into the up to the 30th or 40th card that you're, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars to help the fire department to get something or other. Or it's not that we don't want to fund the fire department because we know how important our fire department is, but you know, like something like that for extras that we, you know, you need extras. Cause I see that there's things coming up here, the ATV and the trailer to, tra to transport. This is going to need a building for storage. We, you know, anything that we add to your fleet, I am assuming there's, with the fire trucks in there, you're going to need buildings built to store your stuff because you don't want to sit it outside because of the weather and so on, so on. Anyone else? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say, like, I, I get what where you're coming from as far as, you know, go, the money's going back into the community, and I think that that's great, and I think that with all of the changes that are happening province-wide, that it's inevitable that because we are going to be on our own and because things are changing provincially, we are going to, there are going to be cutbacks, there, there are going to be, they're going to have to be, um, you know, like things like uh, our arena, for example, we'll be responsible as a village to maintain it on our own, and uh, without any provincial or, or federal funding or, or grants. We will no longer qualify for anything like that. So that being said, I think that, um, you know, fundraising for things like this, that the things that the fire department is going to need would, would be a huge help um, to everybody in the community because the more we can save in one area allows us then to be able to offer things in other areas. Um, so I agree. I think that there should be some fundraisers and, and I mean, we as a council and, and can do our part to, to help with that as well. Um, I know that uh, Dalhousie does their men's night and their ladies' night, and I think that brings in quite a, quite a crowd. And um, you know, even even myself, I wouldn't mind uh, you know helping with some of it or helping you guys come up with ideas or, or things like that. Because um, basically, we're all in this together, and especially where we will be cut back, and we are a small community, and right now we're we're keeping two fire department buildings, um, bas basically two fire departments. Um, how long we'll be able to do that, I don't know. Um, you know, and then we have this infrastructure that's supposed to be coming in with the port. Well, if that comes in, we may, we may be looking at having to increase uh, fire department membership. So that may be another cost because of, you know, if we're going to have all this new industry down there, that would be, um, you know, the fire department would be something that we'd need to make sure would be equipped and, and ready to go if there was ever anything that happened down there. So with all of those things in mind, I think that, you know, any any areas where we can um, cut back, raise money, um, you know, do things differently to maybe increase what is brought in with the fundraiser. Like, I think that uh, even that dude run that they had back here this year, I think they, they dropped off a check at the, the IWK for $6,000. Yeah. 
I think it's all, I think a lot of what we do in Beldoon, it's, we do it that way because it's always been done that way. And I think that's a lot of why things are kind of getting stagnant and, and I think we need to come up with some new ideas, but us, us included. Um, so yeah, that being said, I, I think that the, there should be some fundraising and, and start trying to cut back and come up with new ideas and, and a plan of action now before, well, well, we still have time to kind of plan ahead. Yeah, um, I, I think I'm going to steer you in a direction that, uh, that maybe they hinted at, but need to make, in my opinion, a little more clear. Um, the, as you know, the province is having elections on the 28th of November, and there are going to be a tremendous amount of realignments in all municipalities throughout New Brunswick. Beldoon has been very fortunate where we did not, we were not impacted by that. We, we are our own entity and will not have elections. But with that said, uh, Beldoon is also part of the Regional Service Commission for the Shalor area, the Shalor Regional Service Commission. And these people are going to be given more power and more direction by the province and it will be mandated by the province in areas such as tourism, uh, leisure, sports, that type of thing. And I have no hesitation in saying that the fire departments uh, throughout the, the region will be on that agenda because it is a major cost, not only for Beldoon, but for smaller municipalities and smaller uh, you know, entities. So my point is, is that um, as as these things become more and more visible because the government will be laying out a plan and telling us what's going to happen, um, you know, four years from now, when the next election rolls around, the, uh, the, the, the look of Beldoon may be completely, completely different in what you see right now. A lot of things may be out of our hands and out of our control. So um, I, I believe what they're trying to, to, the message that, you know, just make sure that you guys are all lined up and get your ducks in a row and that you, you know, you, you have the ability to, to be able to function and maybe do some things that, for example, um, you know, when it'll come time to buy apparatus or buy a new fire truck, uh, these type of things may need to be budgeted through the Regional Service Commission, taken right out of our hands. The only thing the municipality of Beldoon will do will be to pay a share of that expense. But we will also have to pay a share of buying a new fire truck in Bathurst because they're part of the Regional Service Commission too. You know, so... You know, the preparation that, you know, in the mindset so that uh, um, you have some individual decisions and choices that you'll be able to make so that you're, you're not completely dependent on what happens if the shuffle comes that the regional service commissions are making decisions for the fire truck, uh, the fire departments as far as budgets are concerned. And that may be a good thing and it may be a bad thing. That part I don't know. But I do know that, uh, that at the end of the day, um, you know, what we're trying to do here is, you know, be prepared and have you in a position so that you are an entity of your own and you are able to do the things that you enjoy doing and, and the things you have done in the past. Because if you're 100% dependent on council, things may change in four years. We may see some major, major changes in, in how councils, I mean, I, I wouldn't hesitate to say in all honesty, I, I do firmly believe that uh, you're probably looking at the last councils in all of New Brunswick. Uh, uh, look what's happening, you know, in the, for example, in the other areas, they're, they're dividing up their, uh, their, their municipalities into wards. And then they're saying, well, we're gonna have two members from each ward and that's gonna be what council is. Well, some councils had four and five people and now they're down to two. 
you know, uh, if I want to use Dalhousie and, uh, and uh, Charlotte as an example, <laughs> the mayor of Dalhousie could come from Charlotte. And the, or vice versa, the mayor of Charlotte could come from Dalhousie. So there's going to be some major, major changes and some major things that are going to happen. And in in, you know, in the next four years are, is just the beginning of where we're going. So that's, that's what I think you know, that we're trying to say maybe bring to your attention and, and deal with. I'm going to leave it at that, but I do have one comment that I would like to make, if I may, Your Worship. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, you know, you were uh, contemplating an election of uh, deputy chiefs. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that you, you basically have selected two deputy chiefs because of the, of the way things went. Um, I do want to say that I have spoken to several firefighters, and as I mentioned to them, I think that was probably a very, very good logical choice. Uh, I, I've, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Um, you know, two heads are better than one, but by the same token, uh, you know, Mr. Stevenson, you, you, you bring an asset to the, uh, to the fire department that has been missing for a long time and I'm sure Chief Legacy appreciates what you do there. Um, I know from a council point of view, uh, you know, the the, um, the policies, procedures, guidelines that, uh, that have always been an issue, um, you know, are now much more visible and, and dealt with. And all of that is an extremely positive thing. So I think that, uh, that the fire department has made, you know, uh, a, a step forward by having those duties shared. And I think it's, uh, uh, and for me at least, I don't want to speak for the rest of council, but for me as a counselor who has been involved in, uh, in since 2000, uh, you know, our, our, our most vulnerable area is the fire department. And the more expertise, the more uh, guidelines, the more training, the more policies that you have in place to protect not only your firefighters, but us as a council is a good thing. So from my point of view, Congratulations, it, it, it was, for me, it was a positive thing. So keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. Um, did you guys, did you have any response to any of the comments any of the council members made? No, oh, just take note. Okay, so we move on to the second one. Uh, this was, uh, it, it's under Deputy Chief Guitar but it's a letter that we all have in front of us uh, concerning off-road rescue plan. Um, I'm not gonna read this publicly at the moment. Um, I would prefer if this was handed over to legal, to be honest with you. Um, but if you want to describe uh, Chief Legacy or, or uh, Deputy Chief uh, Stevenson, just give a general idea as to what the purpose and what the the letter might refer to that would be acceptable. I wouldn't touch on it. It's just an
Okay, so it's the... It, it, Okay. And um, so, as you mentioned in the first one, this is sort of relates to what we were talking. You know, we, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't see any issue with that. Um, we had talked about some of these things in the past. I know, you know, I, the last term there was a heated discussion in terms of the, the rescue boat. Uh, you guys can probably remember that. I'm not going to revisit that, but. What it, sometimes there are, I know that discussion did bring up the the the, the service commission. Um, so what I would what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to legal to take a look at it and see if they if they see any issues with it, and I'll bring have CEO Kingston bring back their response. I don't anticipate any, but you might as well have that knowledge in your back pocket, right, before you go forward. And if there are no issues, um, and there are no sort of, um, yeah, if there are no issues, then I, I don't see a, uh, we would probably need, I see it, it, it looks, it sounds like it's a combination of what you fundraise and what we're willing to, to put forward, right? You know, as, as some of the councillors mentioned, uh, Councillor Carrier mentioned it, Councillor Burke referred to it, uh, the councillors mentioned to it too. Our budget is going to substantially, is going to look substantially different uh, than what it did. And we don't even know today exactly what that's going to look like because we're still waiting for some numbers to come. So there's going to be, um, it, it's, going to, it's going to demand, I guess, more focus on what it is exactly the fire department is going to need and what we can realistically attain. But that's good because that sort of works with, I think, having the, the dual deputy chief role is going to allow for that more, you know, right? So, some more focus on that because it's pro that's definitely going to probably have to happen. But so that'll be the next step in this. Appreciate the letter. It makes sense. That's right. You're right. And you're going to need those things and we need to be able to supply it somehow. Yeah, and that's 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 great. That's that's great planning. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, anything else, uh, Deputy Chief Stevenson? And, and you know, and the reality is that, you know, at one point, you could almost ask for almost anything because we had the tax base to supply it, right? And let's face it, since November 2019, that all changed, right? That was the start, but it's not the finish, so... Uh, any council members have any comments? 
I, I was just wondering, so if the if the trucks are not supposed to leave the pavement, what is the protocol supposed to be then if there is a skidoo accident or if there is something off-road? And I'm just, and I'm assuming if you're like, so for example, like if you're going with an ATV, you're not going on an ATV to put out a fire because you wouldn't have the equipment to do so. So that would be used simply for, for assessment or for like first response? But how would you get water back there? Like that's what I'm not. Just drill the lead on the barrel with a little tank. Okay. And do you guys have the okay or the authority? Like if, like for example, with that, uh, if there's a skidoo accident or an ATV accident, and there's somebody hurt. Say there's no fire, but there's somebody hurt. Are you guys trained and equipped and ready? Like, do you guys do you guys just go back there and wait for paramedics, or do you, are you guys trained to actually take action of some sort? Okay, so just keep somebody stable or something until... And what is the protocol then for, like, if you guys have, say you guys have a, a bike or, or a skidoo, what about paramedics? How are they getting there? So... So if something was to happen that somebody was, was um, severely injured in the woods, would it be, like, how does the person get out to be able to receive medical attention? And is that what you're looking to have? So that would probably be something that would, that we definitely have to check with legal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just if I may, Your Worship. <coughs> um, in the very, very near future, this council will be sitting down to do our 2023 budget. We will also be looking at our asset management plan for the future. So. Um, for me personally, and knowing the planning that may be involved in, say, budgeting and forecasting and things like that, um, I'm not asking you to detail it. I'm saying that if, if, you, if, if the fire department is aware of purchases that are going to be required over the next two to three to four years, it would be an asset to this council because when we set up our asset management plan, it will be based on things that we require. So I'd hate to see, for example, us spending money on a road when you guys needed respirators. So my point to that is, is that, you know, it, it's, it's just a question of saying, get a list, kind of say, uh, within two years we need this, within four years we, we'd like to see this, we had just a rough estimate of what that costs, you know, then we're able to add that to our asset management plan and, and know that it's coming and, you know, because what happens when, for example, that, you know, if you guys were to say, 
well, we're going to need these apparatuses in two years' time. Well, we know it's coming, and we can budget for it. Because as I say, I know I personally would not want to be planning to do a road when you guys are 10 you know, uh, apparatuses short. So uh, just, you know, uh, I guess a request more than anything. If, if that could be something you could look at over the next few weeks, it'd be of a, a big help to council and our budgeting and our planning. Okay. Okay, Deputy Chief Stevenson, you had a third one? And you know what? If you if if you find there's some confusion, you, you want to get that straightened out as quickly as possible. So, and that's the best way I because it's do, then it's documented for you and it's documented for us. If you, I mean, but gloves and stuff like that, which is like if you're going to purchase something that could be three or four thousand dollars, it seems to be well, yeah, well, that's why we're covering that in an annual basis so we know where our uh, yeah, yeah, I know not like we can't just go and say we'll order three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff, you know, like it has to be.
the works sort of took this on and generated the changes. So he's probably the, the best guy to ask and say, you know, this, this, I just want to ask you this question and he'll, he'll give you an answer straight out because he knows, he knows this part of it pretty well. Okay. So I think just for clarification, I know we run it, we do a PO system at my place of employment and I just checked with Nicole. I think, I believe the whole reason behind the PO system is for record keeping. So it's not so much a dollar amount. It's even if you buy something that's two dollars, you need to you there needs to be a PO attached to it so that somebody in the accounting department knows you, who bought it, what they bought, what it was supposed to cost, what the actual bill was. You know what I mean? There needs to be, yeah. See, I'm not sure how you guys do it as far as dollar value if you're, because as far as I'm aware, you have a budget, and as long as you work within that budget, the money is there for you to spend, right? So it's just more for, like... So if you kept a, if you kept record with your PO system, if you kept a spreadsheet, you would know exactly what you have in your budget because once you are given those numbers, all of your POs that you have been issued, you should have a column there with the, the dollar amount that you've spent since then and, and just put a formula. Right, but if you, if you go into the office today and you find out what's left in your budget and you put that total in your spreadsheet and then you deduct after, after that everything you spend because now you're going to have a PO record of it, Well, you should only have to be given the value once a year. You plug that number in at the beginning of the year, and everything you purchase from that date on is going to be deducted from that, so you know every time you spend something, you know what you've got left. Do you have that kind of, uh, do, you, uh, do you have that software? or that? Okay. Well, yeah. and, and again, I would, I would say, suggest to any, um, you know, any issues that you have that you find, like, that the you say you know the, the software we're using this particular software but I'm I'm having either the trouble myself getting the answers through the numbers that I'm putting in so it, you know could the, it could be on my my part or it, whatever I would say as soon as you run up against those blocks for the first little while until those things get worked out you, you'd want to you know let CAO Kingston know right and even if it's something that's easily workable until we find out exactly where, um, you know, where the bottleneck is, um, it's just this is a this is a pro and you're right. This is a process that started through the year, so that's that's going to be part of it too, right? We don't have a full year of it yet. Once we get a full year of it, as we go down the road, I'm sure the system is going to be a lot easier for everybody to use. But ultimately, it's a system I think that's probably going to work work best. So, yeah, and again, uh, you know, any issues like that. Um, because one of the things that's a real, I think, a, um, a plus uh, having with uh, CEO Kingston is his background in, in doing that. He seems to have a lot of experience in that, so I would I would lean on him pretty heavily. If yeah. I may, Your Worship. Yeah. You know, uh, f for me personally, again, I don't want to speak for everyone on council, but I'm just going to say that I would fight it tooth and nail. That um, the last thing I want to see is our volunteer firefighters becoming accountants. You haven't got time for that. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, the PO system is implemented. Um, we, we, we want to keep that in the hands of the CAO as far as I'm concerned so that he, he is doing it and he has the people at his disposal. I don't want to see the fire department, uh, you know, having to keep ledgers and 
you know, doing things uh, of accounting. You, you're not there for that. You're volunteers doing a heck of a job, and uh, you, you don't need that kind of uh, stress. So for me, I would highly recommend that you have a discussion with uh, our CAO. And uh, as the mayor alluded to, he has a tremendous amount of experience, and I'm sure he can guide you with what will be the best avenue for all parties, and that includes council and, and the village of Beldoon. So, but for me personally, I don't want to see you involved in, in more administration and more paperwork and, and that type of thing. That, that's not what you're here for. Allow the people who are uh, paid to do those type of jobs, let them do it. All you need to do is follow the recommendation. Okay. One thing I'll, I'll add too is I think, um, I think especially for the first while in, in terms of this implementation, CEO Kingston did want to sort of have a, a hands-on approach to how this. So if, if that was his case, then leaning on him as heavily is not, uh, it's not, that's something that sort of he wants anyway, right? So, and that should work for you and, and free you up to do more time. So, but I like the way it's, it's it sounds like the, the, the splitting of duties is, is, is uh, it's good because it's, it's finding these things that perhaps you wouldn't have had time to find before. Right, so I think it's working. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, then we are down to um, the next meeting, I guess. Uh, EMO, I don't think we, we have anything there. Just a reminder that Mr. Poupart, Scott Poupart, has agreed to a November session, so that's gonna take place, okay? Yeah. So, um, I think we can do the adjournment motion then. Well, you seem to be prepared. We have everything else under under control. Have we planned the next uh, meeting? Next meeting will be three months, so we're talking January. January. Let's go second Thursday in January, maybe. Second Thursday. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. I don't think that interferes with any other meetings that we have. We'll go for that for now, and as we get closer to it, if there's any conflicts, we'll deal with it. Okay, so can we get an adjournment then? I move that the meeting is adjourned at 8 for, uh, 840. Seconder? Or 850. Yep. Seconder, uh, 850. Yeah. I'll second it. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye.